you know, in some ways it's serendipity that we happen to be sitting here, you know, in this room. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I was in Massachusetts already doing my residency mm -hmm. in one of those very stereotypic uh, mm -hmm. power over, you know, medical establishments. Mm -hmm. and, and it just happened to have a supervisor who had trained under Judy. Uh -huh. And, you know, and so as I'm being, you know, hand-fed, spoon-fed Freud and, uh, you know, um, well, you know, yeah. you know, they just rolled off my back mm -hmm. because here I had somebody, somebody, mm -hmm. some one person, one hour a week who was telling me that this story, mm -hmm. you know, so in this, right. like, in, 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 that early in my stage of becoming a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and psychotherapist, mm -hmm. you know, I was just letting, I was listening to the power over stuff mm -hmm. and just thinking, this is ridiculous. Knowing that it doesn't make sense. No, no yeah. way. And, yeah. and, and because of the work, mm -hmm. you know, this is how, you know, this is how change happens. Because mm -hmm. of the work, right, that's here that mm -hmm. you guys started, mm -hmm. I got to hear at the same time. I didn't have to sit there in a room and make it up. You know, so I sort of got a running start by having somebody literally giving me this other story the whole time, you know, that made such innate, innate intuitive sense to me. And so, you know, I, I'm reading the papers and I'm starting, I, I started a group with a supervisor for the other residents to, um, to read the Stone Center papers and to really take this in. You know, we had, um, I'm just recalling that... Uh, one of the earliest experience again in my residency was having Irene Steiger come and do a case conference on mm -hmm. a woman that I had been treating for, for you know, a year or so, um, a trauma survivor, and I was working like the dickens to get her separated from her mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that right. abusive mother. Right. And I, I mean, I can't tell you what it felt like to get at the end of my, what I thought to be a very competent case presentation, <laughs> and have Irene just say, you know, basically, why would you want her to? Why would she want to separate from her mother? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What you know? I mean, and it, but it was that kind of earth-shattering. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, that's probably the most important relationship in her life, and it doesn't mean she has to continue to be abused by her. Right. But that is so profoundly shaped how I thought about working with people. You know, right. it wasn't all about separating and, and getting away from and getting all, you know, all into yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and in fact, my first job then, out of my residency, coming out of that place, was to work with Judy at the Women's Treatment Program. Mm -hmm. was my, so, so I've gone from, you know, I sort of went from there in my residency right to McLean Hospital working on a, a, on a unit. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I remember those days, and I can remember, and we laugh about this now, because I would walk in every day and think, this is the best job I have ever had. Of course, it was the only job I ever had. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but it was that kind of excitement of working with a group of women that were looking at things really from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, some of my earlier work then got very intertwined with trauma and trauma dynamics. And that's really where I came to the neuroscience of, you know, uh, human interactions, let's just mm -hmm. say. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think one of the things that's been so... I think exciting uh, for me in RCT over the last, you know, 10 years, uh, particularly is sort of really going back and seeing how prophetic this ma material right. is, mm -hmm. right? So the t four of you could sit there and really say this stuff with some, call it intuition, call it confidence, call it supporting each other, I don't know what you call it, right? I, I, uh -huh. I suspect I wouldn't have had the, the gumption to do it, mm -hmm. you know, in my earliest training. But then to have, you know, layers and layers and a whole field of neuroscience that is now supporting exactly, mm -hmm. you know, what we're saying. And, you know, and it's not, you know, I want to, I always want people to be clear that it's not that the neuroscience validates your theory. It's that it gives us a new language to reach other people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that we can take this out and communicate with people in dominant and hierarchical mm -hmm. positions. And it, it can make sense to them because it's more their language. Right. You know, right.